especially in Europe, media tends to feed into negative public perceptions on refugees like victimhood or burden or a security threat, although these may drastically change during certain periods, certain critical turning points, because media tends to adapt very easily to political context. My name is Fudia. I'm an academic at Tildes Technical University. I mainly work on international relations. I mostly focus on refugee politics from international perspective, from national perspective, and lately local politics of refugee governance. There are certain criteria that authorities look for in order to determine someone's refugee status. But as we can see from the mass displacement of people lately, we are facing a important climate change and their natural disasters and we hear about people moving from one country to another because of scarcity of food, scarcity of water for instance. I guess uh, even though the criterion very well reflects the situation back in 1950s, it may not be the situation in the next 10, 20 years. Well, if it wasn't for the UN, we wouldn't have a refugee regime to start with. But obviously the dynamics change and keep changing, especially when we compare it what's happening with the migrant regime that is trying to be created at the moment. With the Global Compact, there is no one single treaty that tells us the rights of migrants that has not been able to be achieved. Whereas the UN actually quite successfully made this for refugees, even if it's argued to be uh, outdated, etc., etc. There's still a legal framework that tells the states what to do. So the UN, I think, has played an important role in terms of um, engineering this you know, whole process. But obviously, its hands are quite tied when it comes to countries taking the responsibility and fulfilling their obligations. And obviously, um, well, compared to a country of 80 million people, the burden on Jordan and uh, Lebanon government has been much more extensive. They have been having a dialogue with international partners for a much longer time, whereas for Turkey, it has been a project of mostly self-finance. In the case of Jordan and Lebanon, more restrictive policies started being implemented from 2014, whereas in Turkey, it was a dual process. Refugees are being acknowledged as permanent, but at the same time, certain restrictive measures have started being implemented. In Lebanon and Jordan, we can see international actors being active from the early use of the crisis. Whereas in Turkey's case, this is a much more later development, especially with further diplomatic engagement with the EU from 2015. I think it's okay to publish such images if they have a purpose. What I mean is the independence, for instance, the UK daily. When they published the image, they simultaneously started an online campaign asking their readers to sign a petition urging the British government to, to accept more refugees. So I guess, uh, in a way, the media becomes an important tool in mobilizing the public in a positive way to change a government policy. So I guess there the, the image serves a very good reason. One image may not change the whole discussion, but it can actually have an important contribution if the political context also allows it.